So this is a one-hour talk, and uh, it's going to have two, two, two parts to it. Uh, the first part, I will, uh, I will make an attempt to describe the concept behind EcoCell, which is a, a market that we have a market uh, mechanism that we developed for forest ecosystem services. And in the second part, uh, it's going to be more like a tutorial when I show you the software and, uh, and take you through some of the steps that you would have to do in order to use it. Uh, so I expect the second part of the talk to be, um, can you hear me without the microphone well? Yes? Okay. I'm loud. Uh, so I expect the second part of the talk to be more in interactive. And another thing that I want to say is that uh, you, you might see me sitting down or doing strange things uh, on the stage just because, not necessarily because I'm lazy, uh, but because uh, I have a back injury and uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm unable to, to be in an upright position for, for more than 30 minutes. So sorry about that. I hope it's not going to distract uh, uh, you from the message that I would like to deliver about, this, about EcoCell. So, uh, and also, I also realize that many of you have, have seen some parts of this talk, so, um, and I also, I'm, I'm very happy to see many of the math for students here who, uh, who now have the, uh, the technical background in order to understand and appreciate this, this tool that we have developed. So, so EcoCell uh, is basically just an application of uh, multi-objective optimization techniques. Um, uh, the, 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 or, the original research question that motivated the development of EcoCell was to find out how we people um, value ecosystem services such as carbon sequestration, the protection of wildlife habitat, uh, clean water, uh, and other things that are typically uh, not uh, appreciated or traded in, in traditional markets. And so um, people often say, that we value these things in it's infinite. It's the value of, of fish is, is infinite to us, or the, or the value of, of clean water is infinite to us. But what we were most interested in in finding out, not what people say, how they value things, but actually how, what, what sort of monetary commitment they are willing to make in order to support the preservation or the production or the provision of these services. And so <clears throat> we, fi we, we, we followed the same idea. If you want to know the value of your house, uh, I, I, you, can, you can talk to me all day long, all the, all the great things that you have in your house, such as the size, the number of rooms, the location, and so forth. But un until you put your house on the market, you're not going to know how much your house is worth. Uh, your, the worth of your house might be zero if nobody is willing to, to give you money for your house, right? Um, so so we, the, 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 this method was developed in order to measure revealed as opposed to stated preferences that people uh, hold with respect to forest ecosystem services. And so <coughs> EcoCell is basically a bidding mechanism where we use the opportunity costs of producing certain combinations or bundles of ecosystem services as minimum reserve prices. So if you go to an eBay auction online and you want to buy a car uh, or a TV set, you will see, uh, you perhaps see a, a minimum amount of dollars or, or euros that you would have to put in in order to have a chance to, to get that good. Now in, in, and of course the highest bidder is going to get the TV or the car. And, um, and once there is a transaction, you know, you will learn how much your TV was worth. Um, and, and you have a question? No, no. Oh, sorry. Uh, and by the way, you can interrupt me if you have questions. Um, so here, the difference is that you don't bid on, good, on, on, on tangible goods, but you bid on, on the right to have influence in uh, producing uh, a set of ecosystem services by departing from a business as usual management plan. So the business as usual management plan in many cases would be the one that maximizes timber revenues, maximizes the dollars that can be obtained from producing commodities that already have markets. So here what we propose is, is 
is different departures, different alternative management plans that would lead to less timber revenues perhaps, but more carbon sequestration or a better ability to protect wildlife habitat and so forth. And so these departures from the business as usual management plan uh, mean costs, extra expenses to the landowner. It's foregone revenues, right? And so these foregone revenues, we measure these foregone revenues using optimization. We try to minimize this cost that would lead to different combinations of, of ecosystem services. And then we use these, these cost thresholds as, 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 as minimum bid amounts. Now, the minimum bid amount here doesn't mean the amount that you as individual would have to bid if you want that forest to be managed in a way that is different from the one that would maximize timber revenues, but it means that you have to raise through uh, uh, forming coalitions, um, cooperation online, social media, and so forth, the minimum amount that you would have to raise in the bidding process in order to make that particular management alternative financially feasible for the landowner. Because if you don't raise, uh, don't raise enough money to offset the opportunity costs of the landowner, we assume that the landowner is not interested in um, departing from the management plan that maximizes revenues. Okay, is it, is it, uh, does it make sense so far? Okay. Um, so what, what you see here is, um, is an actual uh, trade-off frontier for um, a 4,000 hectare um, research forest that belongs to the University of Washington. So this research forest is, is currently being used for timber production and to demonstrate other silviculture and forest management activities for students and for stakeholders. Um, the primary function, though, of this forest is to, is to generate enough money to support some student scholarships and to support the personnel who, who run the forest. So the director, director's salary and some of the forester's salary. Um, and uh, so, the, so the idea here was to try to, to measure the minimum costs of, of producing a combination of, in this case, old forest habitat in large contiguous patches and carbon sequestration to, to minimize the opportunity cost to the landowner to, 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 to get to an alternative management plan that would lead to a combination of these services at different levels. So if you look at bundle number one, if we call this bundle because combination of these two services and in economics you often often referred to combinations of goods as bundles. And so it, it, you, you can, if, if, if it is confusing to you, you can just, you can just replace it with combination or, or, or package. Uh, so bundle number one is obviously uh, the business as use usual management plan because this is the one that leads to the highest amount of net timber revenues. In this case, it's about $12, $12 million over a 30 year long planning horizon, and these, these are discounted using, using a 7% discount rate. And, and so for this management plan, we have uh, a combination of roughly 40,000 uh, tons of carbon over that period of time, and here we measure only, the, stand, only the, the carbon, the net change in carbon content in the standing timber. We ignore whatever is, is below ground. So this is for demonstration purposes. Uh, and at the same time, this alternative would also produce roughly 400 hectares of old forest habitat, which we define uh, patches of forest habitat uh, that are older than 120 years, and the size of the patches is, gr is greater than 100 hectares. So that would be produced by 2050. Now, all the other points that form uh, uh, this, this frontier here are alternative management plans, and these management plans are quite uh, explicit spatially and temporally, so they, they, they define what the landowner, um, the University of Washington in this case, would have to do in order to, 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 to achieve these projected combinations of ecosystem services. So, so for example, uh, in order to, to move from from bundle one to bundle three, which would mean a higher amount of old forest habitat by 2050, some revenues would have to be foregone. 
And so we have an explicit management plan that, that, that shows you know, which stands would have to be treated or cut, harvested, thinned, and, and so forth, et cetera, in order to implement that plan. So again, these little maps just are supposed to show that these, each of these points is a different management plan. And so the further, further down you go on this frontier, the more timber revenue is foregone, but the, the combination of ecosystem services that are projected to be delivered by those alternative management plans is going to be bigger and bigger and bigger. So again, so just to repeat the idea here, um, what we do is, uh, is you just measure, measure the difference in revenues that can be timber revenues that can be obtained by going away from a management plan that maximizes timber revenues. So if one wants the land to be managed uh, according to the management plan that leads to bundle 31, then this is how much money would have to be foregone. And so the idea of ECOSA is really simple, is let's get people to bid on an online bidding platform, and those bids can, can individually be, uh, sorry, uh, these bids can, can, can be small individually, so you, know, you might only have $100, and the cost of, 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 of making that change in management could be $1 million. But the idea is to, is to even if you have only $100, then you can, use, you can use a messaging system that is underneath this platform, or you can use a social media or whatever to, to create a coalition of other people who only have $100. So for example, this forest is located next to the place where I grew up or where I ride my mountain bike or where I go hiking and I just heard that they're going to subdivide it because people want to buy land for building their, their house, their second houses. And so you know, when that happens in the United States, you, you just encounter this big board that says it's going to be subdivided and some, there are some other information. So that's just, it's just, 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 just gives you advance uh, warning that that forest is going to be gone pretty soon. And so next time you, you drive by, what you see are equipment cutting down the trees and then building houses. So that, uh, uh, so that this demand for second houses or for first houses would be met. And so, um, so you can then say, oh, I have only $100. And then and, and I will show you the website. You can go into the website and you can communicate with others who visited the, the auction and who visited the website. And you can communicate anonymously with them and say, hey, you know, why don't we form a co coalition? Uh, and you can, of course, connect to your Facebook page where you can advertise this and say, hey, let's bid on this. Uh, but at the end of the day, you have to pay. And this is how we measure how people value ecosystem services, is, 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 is financial commitments. So the website is going to charge your credit, or it's going to put a hold on your credit card until uh, the auction is over. And so if the auction is over and the, the sum of bids do not reach the amount of reserve price, that the, the reserve price is as, that is associated with the implementation of that management plan, then the auction is not successful and your credit card is not charged. Or if you bid on an alternative that didn't succeed, but some other alternative did succeed, then your credit card is still not charged. Only those credit cards are charged where th that were used to place bids on the winning alternative. So, um, so again, it's a, it's a crowdfunding mechanism, except the, the, the difference between the, the typical crowdfunding mechanisms that you might have encountered, like uh, raising dollars to do research, is that this here is competitive. There are multiple mutually exclusive alternatives because the forest can only be managed in one way over a 30 year period of time. There, is, there are several management plans, right? But only one of the management plans can be implemented. There, you, can't implement, you cannot implement multiple management plans on one piece of land over one set period of time. And so you bid on mutually exclusive alternatives. And, and if, the, if the sum of bids that were raised for, for one particular alternative most exceeds the corresponding reserve price, that's then they're going to be the management alternative that will be implemented by the landowner. And in fact, the landowner will be legally bound to implement that management plan. So this whole system is set up in such a way so that there, there is a legal contract behind the scenes. And so once you start bidding, you actually have to read and sign online, click OK, I accept. 
uh, the conditions, which means that if, if, you, if you pledge a certain amount uh, to support the management plan, your credit card is going to be charged, but also the landowner is going to be held accountable to implement the management plan if the auction is successful. And of course, the landowner then needs to be okay with all the alternatives that are put up on, for, for the auction. So if you go on eBay and you, you, know, you don't put, on, put your TV up for, for bidding if you don't want to sell your TV, if you don't want to part from your TV. The same way the landowners that we are working with, you have to be okay with any one of the, the, the management plans that are put up for auction. Because if one of them succeeds and the landowner, oh no, I don't want, he cannot do it anymore. There's a, there's a, again, there's a legal agreement. It is what the, in the United States we call um, easements, right? Conservation easements. You have a property and maybe there's a forest on it. You can get into a legal agreement with the conservation organization or with the local government that you don't do certain things on your land. So you, for, you give up some of your, your property rights, but on the other hand, you get money from the government or from the conservation organization not to do those things. Now, this. So there is a legal agreement behind it. It's called conservation easement. And this, this, so the legal structure behind this mechanism is the same, except you don't know upfront, you don't know at the outset of the auction whether or not, you know, what, what, are going to be, what, what are going to be the conditions of this easement. It's gonna be determined dynamically by the end of the auction. But so, so of course, it's also possible that there are some other people who bid on bundle 18, which is cheaper. And even if, even if the, the sum of the bids that were placed for bundle 18 is less than the sum of the bids that were placed on bundle 31, if this amount exceeds the corresponding cost to the landowner by a, certain, by a higher amount, it is going to be bundle 18 that's going to win the auction. Does it make sense? What is the winning balance? If all of them meet the reservation price, it's uh, the one that goes higher? Higher above okay. the corresponding reserve price. You want to maximize the profit margin to the landowner because that's the only way you can get landowners interested in participating in a mechanism like, like this if, if, if there is a chance for profit. Right. And so the auction mechanism is designed in such a way so that that margin would be maximized. So the legal commitment of the owner is to the plan that gets uh, as higher above the reservation price. Exactly. So it's, it's the, the winning plan is chosen based on which one maximizes the total aggregate profit right. to the landowner. Okay, so here is an example of, uh, well, these are just symbolic dollar values here, but let's imagine that there are, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, management alternatives, and the red bars show the minimum, the reserve prices that correspond to the opportunity costs to the landowner to implement the management plans. And then the green or purplish uh, bars represent the dollars that have been raised through bidding. And so in this case, for example, if $67 is the minimum reserve price for this alternative, and only $30 have been bid, it's, this is not going to succeed. This is not going to succeed, but this is feasible because the, the amount of bids, the, no, the total sum of bids exceeds the corresponding reserve price by a big margin. And none of the others succeeded in this particular case. This is just, an, this is just a result of an experimental auction. Yes? When you are the Excuse me? Well, yes, but it's, this is a good question, though. So, so, we, so first, we, we, we were not sure whether we should disclose the reserve prices or not. This is, this is private information for the companies. So if a company discloses how much it would cost them to do something, you know, they give up something for free. Because if the auction is not successful, they, they, you know, they, they don't get any benefit from it. So we were playing the idea of, of, uh, with uh, uh, non-disclosure where we, we, would, we would hide the reserve prices and we would just tell the users, the computer would just tell them, okay, the reserve price for this particle bundle is, has been met. And so what we found was that in most cases, in order to maximize the, the expected profit margin for the landowner, it is better to disclose the revenues unless the total value of the auction is very, very high. So if you have a, a forest, tens of thousands of hectares, 
in that case, it, 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 you know, our, our empirical data shows that it, it, it makes sense not to disclose the reserve price. So in eBay too, in some cases, you can bid uh, on some goods where the, the minimum bid amount is not disclosed. And so in certain cases, that leads to more revenues, more auction revenues. So it's a good question. That was some of, one of the, the design variables of the mechanism that we studied. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. And only one can be, on, your credit card is going to be charged only for one of them because, um, yeah. Okay. Any more questions at this point? Okay, so, um, so, so this is the, the web implementation here, and, uh, and again, I just want to step you through the process. So, so there are three ways you can interact with this website. One is, one is that you are uh, um, somebody who is interested in, 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 um, in contributing to the production of ecosystem services. You are an investor, an eco-investor. You might be a person who grew up next to the forest I was talking about. You might be somebody who just wants to preserve forests close to the city, or you might just want to increase carbon sequestration, or you're just, you just love to bask in the warm glow of altruism, uh, uh, just, just helping other people. Um, and so that's one way. So in which case, and when you go to the website, uh, you, the first thing that you, you do is that you, you, you look, the first thing that you can do is to, is to look for things that we call land campaigns, projects where you can bid, auctions where you can bid. And you can also create auctions yourself. And that's the second way to interact with the website. So if you are the one who first sees this big sign that this area is going to be subdivided, and so the developers going to bid and offer money for the right to develop certain developable lots, then at that point, you can also come to our website and for a certain fee, you can, you can go in and set up a bidding process for that particular forest. But of course, before you can do that, you have to get the agreement from, from the landowner, and the landowner could be the city. And so, um, so that's the second way. So the first one is you go in, you look for land campaigns, auctions, that are close to your heart, right? And you pick management alternatives that you like, and you start bidding. That's one way to interact with the website. Another one, is to go in and set up your own auction. And in which case you do something completely different because then you have to go in and create uh, the visuals, the descriptions of the alternatives and so forth. And the third way is just to be a researcher who wants to study uh, ecosystem markets, how to set up these auctions, what, what, set up, what, rules, what set of rules would be the most conducive to maximizing participation from the landowner's side or participation in terms of bidding. Um, uh, and so there are many, other, many design variables that you can study with this website. So I, we talked about one, whether to disclose the reserve price or not. Another, another one would be, should we put a budget constraint on the amount that any individual participant could bid? So if you put in your credit card, we can check how much credit limit you have, maybe $5,000. Should we use that as a budget constraint? on the amount that you can bid across the alternatives. Uh, another thing that we studied, how many alternatives should be present for bidding? The more alternatives you present, the more likely it is that you meet some of the preferences, some of the expectations of the potential bidders. But also, the trade-off is that at the same time, the more scattered the bids are going to be, the less likely it will be to meet any one of the minimum reserve prices. So, so you can go in as a researcher and you get an administrative admin account and in that admin account you can set up auctions, mock auctions like that and then you can, you can recruit people on the web which is what we have done. We have run uh, I think uh, over 50 mock auctions like that where we recruited students and, and people um, and sometimes we gave them real money um, to, to play with and we, we paid them based on how well they played. Uh, this auction. And so you can study what is the best design in terms of, of getting the best result. 
maximizing participation of maximizing revenues and so forth. So in, 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 in the second part of this presentation, I will show you how you can do these things on the website. But so if you are, if, so, so the first thing, if you are um, an interested bidder, uh, the first thing you do is you go in and, and see if there is a land campaign that, that is of interest to you. Maybe Jaguar protection in, uh, in South America. And in order to do that, you want to leave uh, large tracts of forests untouched, and it costs a certain amount of money for the local communities and so forth. Um, and then once you identify those auctions that were of interest to you, then the second step is to look at the alternatives, right? You try to collect as much information about the alternatives that are available for bidding as possible. Uh, and, 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 and of course, uh, from the landowner side, the, from the seller's perspective, you want to provide as much information about these alternatives as, as possible so that you would attract attention. And so once you compare these various uh, management plans, the, the, the second thing that you can do is, is well, first of all, how much, is, how much is this worth to me? And so very often, if you, if, if you don't know how much something is worth to you, you want to see how other people value these things. And so one thing that you can do in this website is to go in and see how much other people bid on these different alternatives. And again, you can also contact those people through an internal messaging system and say, hey, why did you bid on, on this one? I'm, I'm also interested in, in this uh, management alternative. I'm also interested in the, uh, protect, protecting the, the quality of water in this particular watershed. Uh, yeah, I, I feel that we have similar interests. Why don't we f uh, form a coalition and let's put up, uh, let's connect this to Facebook, which, is, which you can do through our website. Uh, and to other social media, and let's try to advertise this option to raise dollars. And so, so this, is a, this is a key aspect of, of this, this mechanism. And, uh, and the idea is similar when there was, there was the, 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 the presidential campaign in the United States uh, uh, between uh, Obama and McCain. Uh, McCain had bigger supporters, bigger amounts of money, but fewer in number. And Obama had many small scale supporters who might have had just $20 or $50. And you know, if you, if you are successful in, in sourcing those, you know, connect to uh, those people, to a high number of them, then you might be able to outbid uh, those who have fewer supporters bid big monies. So that's the idea. And one very important feature here is that you can, you can reallocate your bids. So if you start bidding on, 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 on the management alternative that, say, uh, le le well, leads to complete protection of the forest, there is, there is no harvesting is allowed. That's, that's the one you want. That's very expensive, right? And you see it's not succeeding. But you see that the next one, your second choice, is getting pretty close to the threshold. Then you can move your money into, into that. What you cannot do is you, to, to completely withdraw your bid. You can always push it, put, you can always increase it. You increase your pledge, right? Uh, you cannot take it back, but you can push it to other ones. And in fact, one of the things that we are working on right now is that when, when people do not have the time to strategize and to bid, to rebid, reallocate, is, is that they surrender their right to rebid and reallocate to an internal algorithm that we develop for the website that takes into consideration the predefined preferences of the bidder, and we constantly reallocate the bid in dynamically within the website. So you can say, for example, I, have, I, am, I work for the Nature Conservancy. I have $10,000 that, that my organization wants to use in this particular land campaign. Uh, my number one choice is total protection. But if total protection doesn't work, I'm fine with alternative number three or four. And and, and this is, these are my rankings, as long as the place doesn't get developed. And so then we take that information, and that's input to our algorithm, and then the algorithm is going to always look what the others are doing, and so constantly put it in, in a place where you maximize the probability of success for uh, the utility function that is, was, was given by the, by the bidder. Who, and then, of course, we charge a fee for that as well. And so finally, one, once the bidding 
once the auction is done, what is closest, clo once, it's, once it's over, uh, which uh, if there is a winning management plan, um, then um, the conservation easement, the legal agreement that is behind that alternative becomes, becomes binding and the landowner has to implement the management plan, of course. Well, there are acts of God, some uncertainty related to timber prices, uncertainty related to weather you know, disturbances such as fire or wind. And so all of these can be taken into consideration by using insurance. Um, and of course, that would increase the minimum reserve prices that are associated with each of these alternative management plans. Third party monitoring is also an option that the landowners can bid on. So if, well, well, if, 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 the, if the project involves only one forest stand that is 50 hectares in size, and the question is you know, whether to cut it or not, or how to cut it, or to protect it, then it's very easy to monitor whether it was cut or not. So there is really no need for third party uh, monitoring. But if it's a complicated big project with hundreds of stands or, or thousands of stands, you might want to pay somebody like the Nature Conservancy or, the, the, or a, a land management agency or the Forest Service to check whether the winning management plan is implemented in a way that is, is defined in the auction. And so you can also bid on that. So because there's a certain extra money that uh, it, it costs to, 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 to do the third party monitoring. And so you can bid on say, I want the Nature Conservancy to provide the monitoring for me. I, and these others can be done, okay, I don't want them. I want the state, excuse me, the state land management agency to, 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 to do the monitoring for me, which would be cheaper. And maybe they trust them better than the Nature Conservancy. So it's all market driven. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Um, Alex. All right, so, so, so again, this is, this is a very good question, but this is, there are trade-offs associated with, you know, the more information you want to provide, right, the more credibility you might get. But the more, it co the more, the, the more expensive it is to generate that information. And if it's, if it's too expensive, it, you know, it can be too expensive to, to, to do that, because if the transaction costs of the mechanism are too high, it's not going to be used. So, you know, what our expectation is that the market will define how much information is good enough, like eBay. You know, you take a picture of your uh, car, uh, maybe a couple of shots from inside, a couple of shots from outside, maybe you write a couple of sentences, how, just how great that car is, what is the mileage, and, but you don't write pages, right? And you don't uh, scan with a laser scanner so that they can see where the dents are. So there is, there is some optimal amount, right? You, because if you do too much of it, then you just spend too much money and time on providing that information itself. So we want, we, we, we want to the market, the potential sellers, to decide how much information is, is, is good enough for them. We are not sure exactly how much is good enough. But one piece of the information is the legal agreement that is generated by the website on the fly that is going to be available for the bidders. This is what you, what's going to happen with your dollars if this management alternative is, is, is wins the auction. And so that's very different from giving money to the Nature Conservancy, because if you just give money to the Nature Conservancy, which is uh, now an internationally uh, well, relatively successful uh, organization, uh, they, they, you don't know exactly what they're going to do with your money. They're going to make decisions uh, internally and uh, they have a choice as to how much of that information is going to be provided to you. But here, you directly fund the management plan that you like the most, or the one that you, you think is going to have the highest likelihood of success in the auction. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, so right now in Washington State, we have the Washington State Department of Natural Resources, which is a, a state agency. Um, 
So we are, we've been in talks with them. They are interested in providing that. And uh, they are not the Nature Conservancy, but there are a couple of other land trusts that we have talked with. Like one is the, called Forterra. Their old name is uh, the Cascade uh, Land Trust, Land Conservancy. Uh, and so these are the organizations that we think would have the credibility to provide those services. But again, it costs money. Again, we want the market to decide how much of that monitoring they want. Okay. Yes. A few years ago, I saw in a Finnish company a project similar for a tangible tool that was timber. Mm -hmm. so So it was bidding for the, for the right to cut the timber? Yeah. Okay. People will sell the, the, the woodlot online, so it's a timber, it's a more tangible than this one. Right, right, right. So. Well, that's actually the standard practice in the United States. So um, um, if, you, uh, if, you, um, if you are a, a public land management agency, such as the Washington State Department of Natural Resources, that's how they get their timber cut. They don't, have, they don't have crews to do it. They put for a stand up for timber sale, and then, and then, and then the logging crews bid on the right for the stumpage. And so they then have to, to come up with a plan to, to, to extract the timber from, from those stands. So it's, uh, it's, uh, um, I think it's also being done in Pennsylvania, right, Mark? The bidding for uh, the right to, to for timber sales. Well, sure, timber sales is sold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the comment that you didn't hear was about uh, uh, that these similar systems uh, have been implemented in Finland about uh, selling timber on the stump stumpage, right? Yeah, it's not online. It's not, uh, uh, it's not online. online. Yeah. Hours, uh, yeah. Yeah. You are right. Yes. The American ones are not online either. OK, so so what I want to do next, and how much time do I have now? We have 20 minutes. 20 minutes. So, so if you go to the web, so this is, this is the website. and. Um, and so this is, as, a, as an interested bidder, so this is one thing that you can do, is to you go to the website and see if there's any, any auction that is, is of interest to you. Um, and so, for example, here's, here's one project we had in New Zealand. We are in the middle of the North Island. This, is, this, this lake here is, is called Lake Taupo. That's the biggest lake in the middle of North Island. And if you are familiar with this part of the world, uh, there are huge radiator plantations in, around this lake and further out to the northeast. And they, they form certain kind of a, 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 a buffer between the lake and the native New Zealand forest habitat, native forest, native bush as they, they call it there. And so in this particular instance, the Maori owners of this piece of land were interested in, in, uh, in changing them, their management in such a way so that the nitrogen emissions from the land into the lake would be reduced. And the problem was that because the, the profitability of, of, of timber management in, 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 in New Zealand just went down with the US dollar getting weaker and weaker. And so a lot of people who, who established these radiator plantations started to convert them to, to dairy farms. And so dairy farms come with a lot of nitrogen emissions, and that, that, that reduced, that, that compromised the quality of the water in Lake Taupo. And so, so they were interested in seeing if, 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 if there would be enough money to, to, to pay to the landowners uh, not to convert to dairy. And so we didn't have a real auction, we had the mock auction, but this is just, just in, a, in a nutshell what this project was about. And if you, uh, and so I'm just trying to show you what you would experience in this website. It's very f similar, I think, to eBay. You can learn as much about, 
uh, about these, these, these campaigns, I uh, have to log in, as, um, as you want. And you can go all the way down to the legal agreement that is behind that management alternative. And, and so this, is, this goes back to, to Alex's question about just how much information is, is enough. Uh, we, 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 we will encourage landowners, the potential sellers, to, to provide different layers of information. And perhaps the top layer in the website would be just, just rough estimates of the services that would be provided and some of the activities that they would do. And then people could dig as deep into the details as, as they want. But again, there is a price associated with providing and getting that information up. So, so the, the kind of things that you would see here is uh, yeah, just, just the information, again, that the then donor would provide, and also some information about how to bid. And so the landowner, in, in collaboration with the auctioneer, us, we could decide whether or not the reserve prices would be disclosed, or whether or not communication between the, between the bidders would be allowed. And so this information is provided in that highlight. I don't know why the font size is so small, but, but you, can, you can, before you start bidding, you can, not only will you be able to learn about the, about the alternatives that are available in that auction, but also the rules that you would have to follow in the bidding process. Okay? And so, so, so you can also see uh, uh, about the bidding activity. Um, and again, you can, you can further go into the details of the alternative management plans. And finally, you can also look uh, at the status of the auction and see where, how people bid at, up to that point. Because that's crucial information for you, so you don't waste your time, in, for example, in this instance, to, to bid in this, this alternative here. Nobody's bidding on it, right? These, these, these dark bars show where the bids are at this point. You can also free ride, of course, if you see that, you know, if you don't do anything and still, it's, you know, one alternative is succeeding, then you might not bid. But, but the way that we set up this auction is, is, is such that we're going to minimize free riding. And what we do is we, at the very end of the auction, we take away this information. So, but nobody would know what happens in the last couple of minutes. And that's called the sealed, sealed bidding. So nobody can assume, nobody can be sure that the bids that you see there are going to be there in the last couple of minutes. And so we studied other auctions. Uh, for example, um, just raising dollars for a public park. The public park would cost this much. And so people start bidding, and for several days or weeks, hardly anything happens. And then, and then a couple of minutes at the end of the, the auction, when the auction closes, we, 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 we no longer show, they no longer show how bids accumulated. They, they shut the whole thing down. They sealed right, the information. And then all of a sudden, people start bidding, and, and because they want the park. And so they put in bids whose total, whose total could well exceed the threshold cost. And sometimes this leads to big profit margins uh, to the operator of the auction or to the city who wants to, to, to have the new, 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 new public park. So that's the same idea here. We want to minimize free riding. Uh, so. Question? No? So um, another thing that I wanted to show you is that if you are, um, you are the landowner who wants to set up an auction, um, basically you, you follow the same steps as, as the same general steps that you would follow on an eBay auction, where, where um, you make a decision as to how you're going to call your land campaign. You want to give a name that is interesting to people, right? You're gonna, you can upload images, you can upload uh, text in order to, to attract the attention, right? And this is, if, 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 if the landowner is, is not not very confident about just what, what information to disclose and, the, and even just what, what, what alternatives to offer. 
for bidding, they can also consult us for a fee to, to help them uh, with, 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 with coming up with those alternatives and, 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 and some information that would describe those alternatives. But, but you have the freedom as a user, uh, as a seller, you have the, you have the freedom to, to set up your auction yourself. And here you can, you can define the rules. Uh, for example, want to disclose reserve price or not? Should this communication be allowed or not? Can they withdraw the bids? Uh, should the budget, uh, the credit limit on the credit cards be enforced? So you can, you can, you can, you can, you can play with these at this point. Um, and so you also, I also told you that there was a third way to, in, in, to, to interact with this website, and that was if you were a researcher. So, so some of my colleagues at the University of Washington use this website for studying um, uh, uh, co contribution games. And, and I gave you one example about raising dollars for a public park. And, and so there are di many different theories from, ec from economics about, about how to maximize participation in, these, in, these, um, uh, in these, these contribution games. And so one idea that we are ac actively studying now is lottery. And so lottery would be, um, suppose there is an auction that is not successful, but there have been quite a, quite a big uh, number of bids and high value bids placed on on many of these alternatives that are offered in, in, in the auction, but they, that some did never reach the threshold. So it was close, but it just didn't succeed. So one thing that we, will think, we, we now think about offering is, is to take all of that money and randomly allocate, not the money back to the bidders, but to have the right to influence the management decision. And so we expect, what we, what we expect from this lottery is, is, is more participation. So you might be an individual who, don't have, uh, who doesn't have uh, too much money to, to, to have a big say in how this land is managed, but you know that you know, under certain circumstances you might, you might, you might, you might multiply the, your, 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 your power in, in, in that in, to, make, to make, make something happen that you like. And so, so for these kind of studies, uh, this, this website can be used. And so, um, so one thing that you can do is to set up auctions and you can, you can, you can recruit people uh, uh, online and you can even give them money online if you have a budget, but which we, we do all the time. So we would, for example, we would recruit people from uh, 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 conservation organizations and we, we run a questionnaire and we, we collect information about how much money they have which is confidential, and then we give them real dollars that are, not, that are not equal to those amounts, but they are a fraction of those, but they represent, relatively speaking, how much money they have for bidding. And then we set up an auction where we adjust the reserve prices uh, accordingly, and, um, um, and we offer them with the opportunity of, of using those dollars uh, or not using them, or, 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 or we also offer them rewards. If they play the game well, i.e., they are able to form coalitions, we reward them with more money. So we, these are the kind of experiments that can be done with the website. And in order to do that, you, you do something similar that I just showed here. Just there's, there are more functionalities in terms of defining how the auction can be used. And then finally, just one more thing. One thing that we also do for research is, um, I see that some of you logged in, which is great. Um, one thing that we also do is, is we study bidding behavior. So, so um, here we can, um, we can, we can look at the database, that, so it, it records every single bid that is placed, and, and so, so we can see how people change how they value certain ecosystem services over time as they are influenced by others. And so we hope to be able to use this information, so that every time there's something happens on the website, we record it. Uh, and then we can use, they can mine that information for, 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 for fine-tuning the design of the auction. And, um, 
and, and um, uh, we hope to be able to, to use that information to make decisions about uh, really how, to, how, to, how, how, how to, to set up these auctions, what should the rules be in, in this mechanism in order to, to either maximize the profit for the landowner or to maximize the likelihood that, that the management alternative that leads to the highest social surplus, the biggest net benefit to society as a whole, would succeed. So again, so to, so, so to wrap this presentation up and to go back to the idea of decision support systems, you can view this as a decision support system. It's just crowdsourcing for information, not just what people say they want, but also what are the things that they would actually make a sacrifice to support. So we try to measure uh, uh, the monetary value of these ecosystem services through this mechanism. This is just a workhorse. But we could also use this to make decisions about how a resource is managed. So for first service, uh, and the Washington State Department of Natural Resources both expressed interest in this mechanism, not necessarily to, to, to increase profit, but just to, to see how people value these things, to, to, to help them make a decision about what to do with a certain watershed, as an example. And, um, and so that's where we are at right now. Do you have any questions? Yes. Excuse me. Is there a market for it? Or, 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 I mean, do people in the United States, because I'm thinking about partial in a, or proportions, uh, the forest is for everybody. It's everybody. It doesn't have a value uh, that you can bid on or, or, or offer money. In the United States, is there uh, people do make contributions solutions? Yeah. So, so the question was, is there a market for ecosystem services like this in, in the United States? Well, first of all, uh, uh, I don't know. So maybe this is, this is a, 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 the, we use this to, to, to find answer to that question. A lot of people argue in, in political circles that their people value these things very highly. So let's protect this, let's protect that. Uh, but in reality, how people value these things by making monetary sacrifices, we, we don't know for sure exactly how they value these things. But there's, there are some other markets, right? You know, we see people contribute to, to the Nature Conservancy, and the Nature Conservancy purchases land or they purchase conservation events. So that's, that's an indication of an existence of markets for ecosystem services. But how big is that market? You know, how uh, we don't know for sure. We, what we offer here is an alternative to just donating money to a pool. And is used based on the preferences of a, of a restricted number of people. Here you can make donations directly towards services and management plans that you like. So to answer your question, there is some evidence that people, people spend money on things like this. Um, and on the other hand, the, how much and how big this market could potentially be, we don't know. And so we developed this in part to answer that question. Yeah, Dennis? How to value a management plan? Yeah, so the only thing we know is how much it costs the landowner to provide that, to create, to, to implement that management plan. So that's one reference point for you. And then, so, it, we, so, so we, we, we know that you don't know exactly how, how, how much it is worth to you. And so that's why we set this, this website up that, that, could, that would allow you to study the alternatives, to weigh the options, talk with other people who are also visiting the website. And through a bidding process, you could progressively articulate your preferences as you, as you collect that information. And by the end of the day, by the end of the month, or however long the auction process is, we expect you to have a much better grasp of how you value that uh, ecosystem service. Now, how much is it worth? How much it is worth in the market? Well, the end, at the end of the day, if we have many such auctions, we could, we could use that information to answer that question. But the question for you is how much is it worth to you? 
hundred dollars, hundred and twenty, two hundred, right? So we don't know, you know. And so but we want to give you the tools to nail it, to, to narrow it down into something that you, you think is reasonable. And the only way to do that is to interact with other people on the website and to, to, to study the alternatives and the trade-offs. We want to measure something that, haven't really, that hasn't really been measured before. So, it's a, so at one time, I don't know whether this is true or not, but uh, thinking about this laser pointer, uh, when, I, when I read about uh, the, who, the founder of, uh, of eBay, that, that, uh, you know, how, how he tested uh, this mechanism, um, uh, he, 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 he programmed the interface and in, 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 he wrote the code for eBay in, in one long weekend. And the first thing he sold was a broken laser pointer just to, for tests or testing purposes, right? And to his, to his shock, he, somebody paid $300 for that broken laser. It might not be $300, maybe it's 150, I can't remember. But many years later, when this person became a millionaire or billionaire probably, he, he connected with the person who, who, who bought the, laser, the, the broken laser pointer. And, and so he asked, oh, why, did, why did you pay so much money for this broken laser pointer? And his, his answer was, I, I collect broken laser pointers. So until that point, nobody knew how much that laser pointer was worth. And I think ecosystem services is something similar. We don't really know how people value them, or even if they value them. But so if you don't try, if you don't put them up for a market, you don't know.